Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Two and a Half Cents Podcast. And I'm being joined by Bradley, aka Sergeant. Yo. Uh, we are also being joined by Chris, aka CGM. What's up? And uh, for the first time ever, uh, the guest of the week for this podcast is none other than my friend and uh, wearer of many hats. He's a EA developer. He's also a, a moderator and a commish, a co-commish in the Road to the Super Bowl series that I'm running, the official mole. How are you doing? Hey, man, I'm doing uh, pretty good. Thanks for having me. Glad we were able to get this started 40 minutes late, but uh, I'm, I'm here, so we're good. All right, so a uh, point of personal privilege, uh, I must say, I, I overslept. Uh, night times are my morning, so uh, that's my bad, guys. Uh, it's okay. like assholes. Everybody's got one of the all stink. Yeah, there you go. That's yeah. one way of looking at it for sure. So I get, I have in the reserve now, um, seventy-five minutes of late time that I can use. Uh, it doesn't work like that. I'm pretty sure it does. Eh, it doesn't work <laughs> like that. I'm pretty sure. I'm fairly certain it should. So at the time of us recording this podcast, uh, it is um, the evening of Monday. So uh, Monday Night Football had just happened. Uh, the the uh, Browns, Browns beat the Jets. the Jets. They smoked them. Odell Beckham Jr. had one of the longest receptions of his entire Actually, the longest reception. It was of the his, longest reception. Yeah, the was- longest reception of his entire career. Uh, I, I don't know, man. I think the Browns are for real. I actually think they're worth the hype this year. What do you guys think? They, they played awful Adam Gase's team, uh, and I told you he was a terrible coach last week, and you all laughed at me. He's not a good coach. The Dolphins fired him for a reason, and uh, I, I, I'd i like to Let's see the side. Browns look now play at- a competitive team and see where they are. And they played a mediocre team last week in the Titans, and – Got their asses kicked, so I'm not uh, on the bandwagon yet. I, I would like to say that um, the best part of tonight's game was that David Njoku got injured. Obviously, oh I wish God. him the best. What? I do, well, here's the thing. Let me be clear. <laughs> Let the record show. I haven't actually seen the injury, so I wish him nothing but the best. I, I, I heard it actually wasn't great. The reason I say that is because he was the last guy I was facing in fantasy tonight in a league that I historically am garbage at. And I mean, absolute, it's literally a waste of $50 every year. I'm just handing people my money, but I finally started two and oh, and it, you know, he wasn't able to put any points up, but obviously, uh, it's, it's a shame that it's at the expense of an injury. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, isn't it funny how like fantasy football at the same time, it lets us root for more teams than just one, but also at the same time, it helps us root against particular players. That's, I find that an interesting um, an interesting element to fantasy football that not a lot of people probably uh, take into consideration. But I think to your point, Double R, the Browns actually, I think they said on the broadcast, they faced five straight teams that are currently at 2-0 and on the schedule. So um, the next five weeks are definitely going to show us what the Browns are made of. I still think they're a playoff team. I think they're a wild card team right now. I think the Ravens are the best team in the AFC North. Um. But, you know, considering what's happening to the Steelers and the Bengals, I, I see those two teams coming out of that division going to the playoffs. Yeah, so news came out yesterday, um, that be- or this morning rather, that Ben Roethlisberger is going to have season-ending uh, elbow surgery. And I, I kind of posted on Twitter that I, in my opinion, I think that Ben Roethlisberger has played his last game in the NFL uh, shortly thereafter, uh, Ben puts out a personal uh, written statement, and you know I saw the picture on on Twitter as well, where he says, "quote unquote," he still has a lot to give the league. So, well, I mean, all he says in that really is that he's going to finish out the contract that he signed. He's going to play the next two years, and then I think after that he'll probably retire. He's he's so banged up, like from injuries in the past, and this one, and. Like, he didn't even get a hit when he got the injury. He just threw the ball and his hyperextended his elbow. Yeah. It'll be interesting for sure if he comes back because I think, you know, if he's not 100% or struggles, then you could have a Eli Manning-type situation on your hand. 
I gotta say though, I, I think the majority of the fan base, having you know spoken to my uncle this this afternoon, who is an avid Steelers fan, um, they they are really on on the back of this uh, um, Mason Rudolph kid. You know, everyone's kind of rooting him on. I think it's this is the t- kind of the turn of the tide. I hate to see a guy get replaced during an injury and pull a Alex Smith, if you will, because that's exactly how he got replaced. But um, I think Ben had his tenure. He he did his time. I think it's time for new talent under center. Not for his rapes, though. What would you say? I said not for his rapes. He didn't do any time. Oh, my God. Alleged. Alle- I'm, uh, he told exactly. you. Let me, let Alleged. me just say I'm, I'm very uncomfortable right now. <laughs> Damn it, Chris. You couldn't you couldn't have gone five minutes. You, you can't you couldn't have gone five minutes. <laughs> nope. Jesus. I will say I, I don't think so obviously tonight, right, during the Monday night football game, the, the Steelers <laughs> traded a first round pick for Minka Fitzpatrick. Um, you know, Credit the Dolphins. I mean, yes, they're trying to clean house. Obviously, they're in full tank mode, but they're obviously, you know, they're stacking up first round picks. Yeah. That's going to make, um, that's going to make for them to be a very exciting team to watch heading into next year with the draft. And, I, and you know, we'll see what kind of players they can get through free agency. But I think for the Steelers, that speaks a lot to the team's belief in Mason Rudolph, also their faith in Big Ben coming back. Because I don't think you trade away a first round pick with a 37 year old quarterback who just has season ending elbow surgery and trade away your first round pick. I just I just don't see why you would do that if you didn't have confidence in the players you already had. It, yeah, I agree. I, it, I think it sends a message like, hey, we're not going to use a first round pick to take a quarterback anyway if we are going to take a quarterback. I think I think Mason – well, Mason Rudolph's only played for, what, a year and a half, really? He's only had a couple snaps last season and a couple preseasons. And then Mo- now yeah, he's mostly the preseason season. snaps. So, I mean – you think of like like I'm not trying to compare him to like any awesome quarterbacks or anything because so far he hasn't been that great, but he's been okay. Um, but like, how did Tom Brady get his start? Drew Bledsoe got hurt. Tom Brady came in, took over, and just dominates. Well, not I mean that he's Tom Brady. He's no Tom Brady. I, I mean, but. Sergeant, you should know of all of us. You should know the history that Big Ben actually his first game came in after Tommy Maddox got hurt yeah. in Week Two of the 2004 season. Tommy so, Gunn got busted. Yeah, you know what I mean. So Mason Rudolph coming in, you know, obviously Mason Rudolph wasn't as high of a draft pick, right? Because I think Big Ben was what the number was he like the number seven, yeah, number seven was, or number eleven pick in that draft. Yeah, and they were actually going to take Eli Manning, right? But the Giants grabbed him first. Well, the Chargers actually grabbed him. Yeah, the Chargers grabbed him. That's yeah, right. and then, but um, well, she that it will be it'll be interesting to see on the on the other side. You know, the Dolphins, right? I think what are they at now? Four first round draft picks. <laughs> Probably, they're trading away all their it's talent. Ridiculous. It's, like even if the coaches and players wanted to try to do something, they're going to be awful this year because they traded away all their talent because the front office wants to tank. That's unfortunate. Well, yeah, well, there's there's rumors that Kenyon Drake and Devontae Parker have been reached out by the um some of like the Packers uh, front office um that the Dolphins have been you know they've been contacted about you know those two players so you know we'll see I mean I if there's a player I feel bad for in all honesty it's Josh Rosen yeah I gotta get a raw deal well I don't think Rosen's a real talent anyways I mean you know he couldn't beat. He, it was an open competition, and he lost to Fitzpatrick. So you know, I think, I think he's going to be a uh, mediocre Matt. I think he's going to be a Matt Leinart type uh, quarterback. Well, I mean, Rosen got thrown into a bad situation his rookie year, and then got traded the next season. Right. They gave him right. no offensive no, line, nobody, nobody to throw nobody to in really Arizona. Gave him a chance. Yeah, I mean, and really get a Fitzpatrick's chance. only the starter because really, I think the Dolphins want to protect Rosen. You know what I mean? And it's like, honestly, I mean, give it one more week. I think the Dolphins got to play the Cowboys this week. If if the Dolphins lose again by 30, I think the fan base is going to riot and ask for Josh Rosen anyway. And I think he deserves the right to start at this point. And then, you know, then he can go out there and show what he has. I agree. With a team with, with, a team with no weapons for the second straight year in a row. But a lot, a lot of people are saying it's like the battle for attrition in Miami at this point. Yeah, man, it's 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 rough. I've I've gone through some bad years as a Vikings fan, but man, I've I've never seen anything like this. You know, you know what's funny is if I was ever going to change what my favorite team was, it was when 
Randy Moss got picked up by the Vikings because oh, I was a, I was a huge Moss fan when he was in when he was in Marshall. Yeah. So I was I was I was like mm, now I'm gonna stick with the Steelers, but Randy Moss is my new favorite player. <laughs> so last and, week, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, I'm I'm good. I was gonna say th- this week was tremendously difficult as far as like football picks after seeing the results. Uh, oh, man, so many injuries. Uh, you know, um, nine and seven this week. Horrible. Easily the worst picks of the year so far. I went from. 11 4 and 1 last week, or yeah, 11 4 and 1 last week to 9 and 7 this week. Um, but a lot of those games I got wrong were less by margins of th- three or less, you know what I mean? Um, like the Denver and Chicago game, I got wrong because Chicago somehow finds one second on the clock and uh, and kicks a game winning field goal. Um, I don't know how the Steelers lost to Seattle, well, but the Steelers I think... nearly nearly won that game, nearly got that game. They they wasn't they one missed point... a two point they missed a two point conversion to tie the game, right? In the fourth quarter, and then the uh, was it Bush recovered a fumble at the end zone, but fumbled it out of out of bounds after he recovered that. it. Yeah, yeah, so and then at that, one that point, was a heartbreaker. Weren't James Conner and Ben Roethlisberger out of the game at the same time? Yeah, yeah. Ben went out early. What else? Let's see. Um, Minnesota let me down. Yeah, Uh, sorry about that. (laughs) Drew Brees going out. Minnesota's going to regret that uh, contract to Kirk Cousins, I think. No, he's a good quarterback. Well, the Redskins should have paid him, but, you know, he... uh, he got overpaid to go to Minnesota, and he throws late game interceptions. That's just. I mean, you would know your team overpaid for Josh Norman. They'll be overpaying for Josh <laughs> I mean, Norman I for could, a couple more I years. Could, I, I want Norman. I want Norman gone. I've said that for I, a year and a half. I could sit here for an hour and a half, two hours, and tell you why Kirk Cousins isn't the sole problem that the Vikings lost. I mean, you look at last year, they didn't have a run game. You look at this year, they have a run game, but all of a sudden they get 10 to 12 penalties a game. Their defense gives up 21 points in the first quarter. Yes, he made a very, very bad throw on the one of the final drives of the game. That, that obviously annoys me, but that's no different than any quarterback I've seen for the Vikings or really most quarterbacks in the NFL. And honestly, the whole he's been overpaid thing, he's one of like 10 quarterbacks in the NFL that's overpaid. It's all about market value. Right. That's that's all it is. It's all about market value. He's not even the highest paid quarterback in the NFL anymore. I think that title lasted like two months. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just like Matt, Matthew Stafford's a $100 million quarterback. The guy's never won a playoff game. Yeah, like it's true, but nobody's talking about Matthew Stafford yeah. right now. You know what I mean? Like he's never he's been to the, the Lions, <laughs> right? He's he's only been to the playoffs twice, right? Well, like, I think that's because of expectations, though. I mean, no, everybody right. expects the Lions to suck, where everybody's expecting the Vikings to right. compete yeah. with the Packers for the North title, and everyone expects the Vikings to. You know, they could have had Case Keenum, and they could have kept him for three point five million, but nobody remembers the fact that we had a different coordinator. The schedule was different. Aaron Rodgers got hurt that year, so the Packers weren't even a contender. The Bears hadn't become what they are now yet. The Lions were still the Lions. Like everything for that season, the mm-hmm. twenty seventeen season, was set up for the Vikings to go to the, at least the championship game. Um, you know, the the Minneapolis miracle. I mean, all that stuff was like great, but Keenum. He just didn't have enough to say, wow, like, could he do it again with a different system? And it's just like, when you get a new coordinator, sometimes your coordinator wants a new quarterback, and that's, you know, you get you get a guy like Kirk Cousins. C- guys like Kirk Cousins don't come out to free agency very often, let's be honest. Whether you like him or not, that caliber no, no, of quarterback does not... totally botched that. Right. But, you know, now they have Dwayne Haskins. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, and they can't play him because they have an ass clown general manager who pissed Trent Williams off. And this is the part where Chris calls for everyone to be fired and for them to clean up house. We've 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 heard this. We've heard, <laughs> we've heard this, this song this before. before. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, after twenty five years of sucking, I'm just I'm just apathetic at this point. <laughs> You're easily well, the I most mean, negative fan I've ever come across, Chris. 
is it Tell better? Tell me one thing it, I have to be optimistic about. Nobody can. You almost, I mean, you held the Cowboys to tw- to like 34 yards in the first quarter of this game this week. Yeah, and then moron, clown-ass, dipshit Minuski calls soft zone the whole fucking game. <laughs> oh, boy. Wow. Oh, so, man. Um, watch, watch, our, watch highlights of our game. He's in the soft zone the entire game. Now, tell me one other team that runs a soft zone the entire game. Even the Dolphins, who suck. We'll lose to him because he runs a soft zone the whole game. Just how all this cussing and swearing makes me think you guys should be sponsored by like Dove soap bars. <laughs> Just to, like, you notice it's all coming from Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, I mean, don't get me wrong, I do it too. I, I I feel the rage, Chris. I feel it. I think uh, you know you got Ravens with two Super Bowls. You got Steelers with six. I don't think these guys understand the pain. You know, you're a little bit older. You you've seen a little bit. I mean, you're old enough. You probably saw the '87 championship game when the Redskins beat the Vikings to get to the Super Bowl and win it. You know what I mean? No, so, I was uh, I was oh, born in '87. Oh, I thought you were like 45. He he looks a lot older than he is. <laughs> My bad. Wrong. It's, it's all the Wrong. Mayo. I'm not My 45. Bad. Oh, gotcha. Mayo will do that to you. Yeah, the Mayo. Well, I don't want to I was wondering, Mo, if you'd be interested in uh, going through the Week Three NFL picks with us. Uh, I'd love to. All right, so here's the order we're going to establish. I'm going to announce the matchups. Uh, Mo, because you are our guest, I want you to go first, uh, followed by Sarge, then Chris, and then I'll give my input at the at the end. So um, opening up week three on Thursday Night Football, and I'll, mind you, the uh, Vegas bets are pretty raw because it's still Monday and usually they don't get refined till about Wednesday or Thursday morning. Um, so at the moment, it's going to be Tennessee at Jacksonville um, on Thursday night football. Um, Tennessee getting one and a half on the road. Oof. Um, man, I'll tell you what. The way uh, that, that new quarterback, the Jags, got Minshew, the way he was able to drive down at the end there in that clutch situation and score that touchdown, I, I just don't see enough out of Tennessee. I think the Jags win it. I think they win it, and I think they win it comfortably, to be honest with you. Okay. Yeah, I got the Jags too. Just because I don't like Tennessee. I'm taking the Titans. I think the Jalen Ramsey thing is going to be a distraction. I think uh, Doug Marone's a clown. Uh, and I would fire him. <laughs> Chris, just out of curiosity, do you have a demeaning uh, nickname for Doug Marone? Uh, okay, you don't. Uh, regardless, I can think of one. <laughs> regardless, I'm going to also take the Tennessee Titans. I think. Uh, Doug- Dumbass Doug? Uh, not oh, your best geez, work. That's, that's, right. that's um, not, your, cute. not your best work. But uh, I'm, I'm also going to take the uh, Tennessee Titans. I think there's going to be a lot of uh, distraction. And I'm actually not sold with uh, their quarterback, um, the Jacksonville Jaguars quarterback. I don't think he's going to be able to uh, perform some miracles that he, he did uh, this week. So I'm definitely taking the Titans. Uh, next game. Is going to be a tough one for me to decide because it is my beloved Baltimore Ravens two and zero versus two and zero. Baltimore Ravens at Kansas City. Uh, Kansas City currently favored by six and a half points. Oh, I'm taking Kansas City. Kansas City. I'm taking Kansas, Kansas City by. I'm taking them by fourteen. Okay. Kansas City, and it's just going to turn back to the Lamar as a running back uh, debate. I don't know if that's going to happen. I think he's it been, will. He's been because... pretty successful throwing the ball. He's, he played was... two, he's played two terrible defenses. I mean, come on. The Cardinals and the, the, the Dolphins, I mean, give me a break. Let's see him play against but, a real defense. But even with that, he should, he should if he was playing like he did last year, he'd still be running like a, like a fiend. He'd be running like a running back. Well, he, he's he going to get himself hurt running. But I he's, think it's I think it's inevitable. He, he effectively think, made uh, me eat crow in the first two weeks of the season. And I I think the Chiefs are going to shut him down, and the critics are going to come back out and say that he played two subpar defenses. That's my take. Chiefs by fourteen plus. Okay. Uh, before I provide my pick, uh, Mold, I'm just curious why when I said six and a half, uh, they're why when I said the Kansas City Chiefs are getting six and a half at home, you say you're going to go sixteen. I said fourteen. Or fourteen rather. I just I just think that Kansas City Chiefs are just really good at home. I think they're gonna win by fourteen. 
Okay. I just, you know, it doesn't gotcha. matter what the score is. It could be 14 nothing. It could be 28 <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I, also, I also think Mahomes is a much better quarterback than Lamar Jackson. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, that's, well, obviously, that's, that's not that's not breaking yeah. news. Right. Uh, I'm actually going to go uh, against my mind and against my heart, and I'm gonna, actually going to go with the Kansas City Chiefs at home. Uh, I think this is going to be a big test. I mean, obviously, Lamar Jackson has played against the Kansas City Chiefs team before. Uh, granted, a lot of things have changed. Both teams have gotten a lot better since the playoffs. But Kansas City, as uh, Mo alluded to, are they're just too dangerous at home. And I, I mean, I think it's going to be a big test for Ravens. I do. I think they're capable of winning. Yes, absolutely. But it, I don't. I'm not going to put my money on it. So I'm taking the Kansas City Chiefs. Tyreek Hill's out too, right? He's out for three more weeks, I believe. So that's a big that's At a big weapon minimum. going. Yeah. Tell me about it. I have him in my fantasy league. <laughs> um, next game, the 0-2 Cincinnati Bengals at the 2-0 Buffalo Bills. Whoever thought the Buffalo Bills would start the season off undefeated? You know, that's, that's crazy. Buffalo Bills currently favored by six points. Oh, I'm taking the Bengals. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm taking the Bengals. Are they playing uh, in against, Cincinnati? Against that spread, I'm taking the Bengals for sure. Uh, Sarge, to Maybe. answer your question, they're playing in Buffalo. Oh, I'll take Buffalo. Wait, are we taking the spread or are we taking the winner? I'm only giving you the spread. That's because that, that's the current in Vegas line, right? So, um, yeah. you, so you can make your decision based off that if you want to, but I'm just giving okay. that to you to help you. I'm going to pick the Bills to win. I think Cincinnati might cover. But, okay. you know, I just – they just look dysfunctional again, like when they were called the Bungles. Yeah. They're always called the Bungles. They, they will always be called that. And I think, you know, I think this trend of hiring these 30-year-olds to be Sean McVay 2.0 is going a little overboard, to be honest. Wait, are you calling out the Packers here potentially? No, I'm calling out Zach Taylor. I know. I know. Okay. All right, so – I'm actually going to take uh, the Buffalo Bills here. Uh, it's unbelievable to say. I never thought in my life I'd see a 3-0 and Buffalo Bills, but potentially that's what we could see this weekend. So, well, Especially after they traded McCoy. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, next game uh, is the 0-2 New York Jets, which we saw them take their second L tonight on Monday Night Football. The 0-2 New York Jets at the 2-0 and New England Patriots. Get this. Here's the best part. <laughs> Here's the best part. You want to know the Vegas line for this game? It's 18. I was going to say, was gonna say 16 and a half. Oh, there, spoiler alert. <laughs> Actually, I'm not going to give this away, but there's a game in the lineup that's even more than this. I'll let you guess it. But uh, New England is favored by 18 points over the Jets. Mo, Mo, is there any question here? I mean, listen, the New England Patriots defense got me 37 points in fantasy. I expect at least 30 this week against the Jets. I'm taking the Pats. <laughs> Sarge. <laughs> Bro, the Jets are on their third string quarterback. They're relying on <laughs> Bell to do everything. They're they're done. They're done. Okay. That tells me everything. I'm gonna, gonna win this game. I think the Pats are gonna beat them as close to as bad as they beat the Dolphins. I think the Jets are a joke. I think Adam Gates is a joke. Uh I don't think the Jets will score a single touchdown, a single point. I don't know if they'll shut them out, but they're not. The, I don't think the Jets are going to do well at all. I think it's going to be over by halftime. Yeah, and, and by also, the way, I also, go ahead. What's that? Go ahead. No, I was going to say I know. I know a game has the wider spread. Just looking at the schedule, not looking at the line or anything. I know. I know what game you're talking about. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're about to get to it soon. Um, I, and I wanted to say before we get too far into these picks, every week I like to provide my, I guess, my lock of the week. Um, and you can never pick the same team. It's kind of like a survivor. <laughs> it's kind of like a survivor pool, but not really. So try to keep that in mind, too. If you see a game on a schedule, maybe we already discussed it, but um, we're, what is your lock of the week? Keep that in mind. Anyway, next game is the – oh, my goodness. This this record's ugly. But the 1-0-1 oh Detroit Lions at the 1-1 one one Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, Philly getting 7-8 points at home uh i'm gonna take philly okay. i don't i don't i don't buy the lions I, I think uh 
you know, every year the Lions always have that one win on their schedule where I kind of go how, and, and I think they had that against the Chargers at home. Um, you know, two teams that, you know, only play each other once every four years. So I think the Lions go back to being the Lions, kind of the doormat of the NFC North. And uh, I think Philly wins by at least 10. Okay. I'm going with Philly just because the Lions have a history of just letting their fans down when they need to win. I'm going to pick Philly, but I, I think Philly's really overhyped this year. I mean, they struggled in the first half against the Redskins. They really got outplayed by the Falcons. So I I'm ex- I don't think they're going to go far uh, if they make the playoffs. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take Philly. I just think that they have a little bit more work with on offense and defensively. They bend but don't break, whereas Detroit's is broken. Um, <laughs> so I'm taking Philly at home. I think that especially Philly's a really tough spot to play uh, in Lincoln Financial. So uh, that's who I'm going with. So um, backtracking to a couple picks ago, the 0-2 Jets at the New England Patriots, Vegas is giving the, uh, the Patriots 18-point favorites. Before we give our picks for this next game, is there any guesses as to what the Vegas line is for the 0-2 Miami Dolphins at the 2-0 Dallas Cowboys? 21. Um, 24. 22 and a half. Okay, so it's going to be a deadlock tie between uh, – it's going to be the middle ground between Mole and Sarge. It's actually 21 and a half points given to Dallas. So with that being said, Mole – who are you taking this game? <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh oh. Wait a second. He's gonna pick Miami. Oh my goodness. I'm not gonna. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna pick Miami to cover. Oh my goodness. You heard it here, folks. Oh my goodness. He's taking the zero and two Miami Dolphins. I mean, I'm not gonna take him to win- cover. I, I think not, it's gonna not be as the winner is to cover. Yeah, I think they're gonna cover. Um, you think? They I are? mean, obviously, I think Dallas wins, but I think Dallas only wins by twenty. So you think they're going to cover the spread? <laughs> yep. Oh my goodness, you you are more brave. Than if I, I was am. a betting, if I was a betting man, I would take Miami against the spread. I would, okay, I would definitely do that. Yep. I could honestly see Miami going zero sixteen this year. <laughs> no, they'll beat the Redskins. <laughs> oh, here we go. Leave it to the Redskins fan to say that. Do you really have a favorite team? Because I mean. <laughs> You're supposed to be a Redskins fan. But I'm Redskins apathetic, dude. Thing. <laughs> Chris, what do you think? Uh, I hate Dallas, but they're going to win and go to 3-0. and And we're going to have to watch stupid-ass Zeke with his spoon feeding himself. Like, a... Does everything bother you? Oh, don't forget, you'll have to listen to Colby. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, shout out there's to Colby. A, there's, a, there's a mute button. If you guys don't know, uh, Colby is in our Discord server, very active on the channel, and he's a, probably the biggest Cowboys fan I know. Uh, as far as my pick, I am, I'm going to go ahead and use Dallas as my lock of the week this week to beat Miami. So uh, I think I think that's a solid way to use Dallas as their lock. So that's that for that game. We've got the 0-2 Denver Broncos, who really should have been 1-1, if I'm honest. They they got snubbed out of that game in Chicago. Um, but it's the 0-2 they Denver... Lost it. Yeah, they did. The 0-2 Denver Broncos travel to Lambeau to play the 2-0 Green Bay Packers. Uh, Green Bay currently favored by 7.5. Uh, damn, I'm taking Green Bay. Okay. Yeah, I'm taking Green Bay, too. I don't think they're going to lose at home to the to the Broncos. I would take Green Bay, and I think I think it's going to be kind of lopsided, like 24 or 9, something in that range. Okay. I actually have this as a close game. Uh, I, I, want to, I want to wish good things for the Broncos because our former quarterback plays for them. Uh, but I got this game being really close, uh, really close no as way. in 21 to 18. So, and I'm going to give that uh, win to Green Bay as well. Next up is the battle of the one and ones, one that's probably going to be watched by Mole and several other really upset 
<laughs> Vikings fans from this week. Uh, the one and one Oakland Raiders at the one and one Minnesota Vikings. Uh, Minnesota currently favored by eight points. Ah, hmm. uh, man, that's tough. I- I'm going to take Minnesota. Um, I, this it's funny. This schedule is actually kind of becoming what it was last year. Uh, you know, start off the year at home. Uh, get a comfortable win, go to Lambo week two. Last year we tied, this year we lose. And then last year in week three, we played the Buffalo Bills at home. And I thought we were going to walk away with that game easily. And we ended up playing a, a dud and lost by like 20. So hopefully that doesn't happen this year. I don't think it will. I think they clean up their mistakes. And I think they win this game by, you know, pretty comfortably. Okay. I have nearly no faith in the Raiders. but. I think I'm going to go with the Raiders just because they got rid of Antonio Brown before the season started. The, the, <laughs> the Raiders hung in with the Chiefs for a little bit, but then the better team definitely prevailed. And I think the Vikings just are – the Vikings are probably a wild card contender uh, on the bubble. So I'll take the Vikings where I think the Raiders are still a couple of years away from being in the playoffs. Okay. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and take uh, Minnesota Vikings uh, at home. I just I, I understand Oakland has come a long way since dropping uh, all their issues with Antonio Brown and certainly Tyrell Williams, the guy who stepped in for him, has been doing tremendous. But um, I, I really like Minnesota's defense. I think, uh, and honestly, say what you want about their offense, but I think Dalvin Cook, he's an absolute monster. Uh, I, and he's a guy I think everyone wishes they had on their team. I'm I'm taking Minnesota at home. Uh, next up is going to be the one in one Atlanta Falcons at the one in one Indianapolis Colts. Um, currently, Indianapolis is favored by two and a half points at home. Which, for those of you guys who don't know the spread, really, usually the home team gets three. Um, so Indianapolis is only favored two and a half at home. Uh, I'm taking Indianapolis. Okay. No Andrew Luck? You, you got faith in Jacoby? Uh, he's been playing really good. Okay. He's been playing really good. You got to remember, I mean, they took they took uh, the Los, Los Angeles Chargers to overtime on the road, get the W in Tennessee. I mean, it's a big deal. I think I'm going to take the, uh, the Falcons on this one just because I don't really have a whole lot of faith in the Colts without Luck. Falcons. Taking the Falcons. I got to say, I, I like what I saw from um, the Sunday night football matchup. Uh, Atlanta beating uh, Philly. Uh, I, I like what I saw from them. I think they're going to go ahead and continue that this week. I'm taking Atlanta. Um, and then we've got the 0-2. I never saw this coming. The 0-2 Carolina Panthers at the 0-1-1 Arizona Cardinals. Um I, this is crazy. I, I want to go back to something that Sarge said on my stream uh, a couple nights ago because he is a a, a native in uh, North Carolina. And I guess they're ripping him apart on the news and they're saying that Cam Newton is done. He's yeah, canceled. They're, saying, they're basically saying he's washed up because he's taken too many injuries. He's overthrowing and underthrowing receivers left and right. So my question to you, Mole, before you even provide your pick, what is your what is your take on the current status of Cam Newton? Um, yeah, so I have pretty close ties to the Carolina Panthers. My parents live in Carolina. Um, so, you know, obviously I know the Panthers really well. Um, that's a joke. Uh, I would say <laughs> he's definitely been struggling. Um, I think when you look at the fact that he's not running like he used to, their offensive line isn't really getting the push in the run game. I mean, he's not, he's definitely not playing like he did. Just his style of play is not what it was when he won the MVP. Um, you look at the play they ran against the Bucks to try to like get first down in the win with running the fake Philly special. I mean, to, to not put the ball, I mean, you did put the ball in your playmaker's hands and in, in Christian McCaffrey, but the way they did it, I mean, two years ago, three years ago, that could easily have been. Even on third and short, that's a guarantee like QB draw, QB run play where he tries to hop over the line. Um, and yeah, he just he's not he's not accurate. Uh, I think his accuracy has been questionable since he got in the league. And I think 
Um, you know, he had a two, three year stretch where he kind of made up for it with the running game and it allowed him to have some open reads, but you know, those windows are a lot tighter now because he's not running. So teams are playing more coverage. Um, so I, I think, uh, I think Arizona wins. I think they win it. Okay. And I, I, just to be fair to you and your picks, I forgot to mention, uh, Carolina's favored two and a half on the road. That's I'm still taking the Cardinals. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm taking the Cardinals too, just because, uh, Apparently, they've torn that team apart this year. Like, the defense isn't that great. The offense isn't that great. Cam Newton's not playing like Cam Newton. It's, it just lo- it looks like a bad season for the for the Panthers this year. I'm taking the uh, Cardinals, I guess, but not by a lot. And I wouldn't surprise if they tied again. I don't. I hate seeing ties, but uh, I'm I'm with you, Chris. I'm taking the Arizona Cardinals at home. I think Carolina is an absolute shell. Uh, forget Cam Newton. The whole team is an absolute shell of what we know it to be. Um, so definitely Arizona at home. Um, and then moving on to the or that was a late afternoon game. Moving on to the rest of the afternoon games. Um, late afternoon games. That is the 0-2 New York Giants. At the one and one Tampa Bay Bucks, Bucks currently favored six and a half at home. Oh, six and a half. Six and a half, man. Taking the Giants. Okay, all right. Any particular yeah. reason, or um, I don't know. Like Tampa Bay, just to me, is just one of those teams where. When you watch football on Sunday, nobody really cares the outcome of their games. <laughs> they're kind of like they're kind of like the <laughs> NFC version of the Titans. Like nobody really cares. Oh my about god, you. you're kind of you're kind of forgotten about. I mean, red zone doesn't really care about you. Fancy, you know, fancy football. <laughs> I mean, Saquon's gonna go in there and do his thing. I mean, he's gonna thigh kick Jameis Winston in the face. Oh my god. I, mean, I I think the Giants. I think the Giants win. Bruce Arians is gonna get red in the face. Might explode. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking the Giants too. I think I think they Saquon Barkley is going to blow up that team. I am taking Tampa Bay. I think that Eli, and I think that the Giants are going to have a big decision to make if they debut Daniel Jones in the regular season against the Redskins. Okay. Uh, before I say my pick, I will say I'm very happy with how Tampa Bay played on Thursday Night Football against you know the bad uh, Carolina Panthers we just talked about. Uh, but I don't think that that level is going to be sustainable against the 0-2 New York Giants, crazy enough as it sounds, but I'm taking the Giants on the road against that spread. And then we've got the uh, New Orleans Saints, 1-1 one one New Orleans Saints at the 2-0 uh, Seattle Seahawks. Uh, Seahawks currently favored uh, four and a half at home. Yeah, I'm taking Seattle. No Drew Brees. Okay. Same. Seattle. All right. I, I'm taking Seattle, too. Uh, I will say, uh, shout out to all the Saints fans out there. I definitely think you guys got cheated out of a victory again in Oh stop it. The refs were so bad oh, during it. Oh stop it. They have nothing <laughs> to be upset about. They won a Super Bowl <laughs> because their coordinator had a bounty on Brett Favre. They had horrifying calls go in their favor. Everything that's happened to that organization since they won Super Bowl 44 has been deserved absolutely 100 percent deserved you will not get me to feel sorry you're saying for anybody you're saying minneapolis miracle exactly what, what goes, goes around, around comes around okay sean payton you know what bro you had a good run drew Brees, great guy right lovely family teddy bridgewater right love the man to death wish nothing but the best for him but man i, I don't feel sorry for saints fans one bit <laughs> okay and never will thank you sorry rant over all right all right um Next game is going to be the 0-2 Pittsburgh Steelers at the 2-0 San Francisco 49ers. San Fran currently favored seven points at home. The 49ers, man, they're fast. Um, Jimmy G, he's playing, he's playing okay. He's not playing amazing. He had some had some questionable picks, but uh, the way that defense is flying around and and you know, um, 
Marquise Goodwin. I mean, they're just they got a lot of speed. Sarge. Oh man. Uh, it's going to be tough, man. I, if, uh, it, if it softens the blow a little bit, I picked against my team this week. So uh, uh, I, don't, I don't think – Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this was coming too, and I have – I'll repeat that. The guess... 0-2 Pittsburgh Steelers at the 2-0 and undefeated San Francisco 49ers at home and San Fran's <laughs> getting seven points. You think if the Steelers are losing bad enough that Juju will just do like a night stream at halftime? Oh, absolutely. Probably. He'll just fire um, it up. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to take the 49ers. Oh, he did it. I Ooh. hate to do it. I hate to <laughs> wow. do it. But like wow. James Conner got hurt early last in the last game. And last year, he after he got hurt the first time, he got hurt pretty quickly after that. Um, And then Ben's gone, so... Uh, Mason Rudolph, like I said, he's, he hasn't played a whole lot of like regular season games, so he's kind of untested for me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take the 49ers, but I am going to say I don't think they're going to sustain this, and I think they're going to finish somewhere seven and nine to nine and seven. Yeah, I, I mean, it's hard for me to predict what the 49ers are going to finish with or how they're going to do. I do know that this week they're going to win. I'm taking the 49ers this week to make them go 3-0 and to start the season. Not bad. Yeah. I'm but just saying I, I will, think they're going to be a Super Bowl contender. I will be sure. extremely happy if the Steelers end up pulling a victory out. And you know what? Here's yeah. my Here's my philosophy, Sarge, whenever I pick against my team. It's like I want my pick to be right, but at the same time, I want them to prove me wrong. Go ahead and beat the spread and win. I don't care. Prove me wrong. It'll be interesting to see how the defense looks with a new with a new defensive back, though. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, the yeah, final that's... game, the final late afternoon game, is also a battle of the one and ones. The one and one Houston Texans at the one and one LA Chargers. Uh, Chargers currently favored by three points at home. So, in other words, the line's even. Yeah, I was gonna say this. This is probably the closest one that I can think of. Um, oof, man. Uh, I'm gonna take the. I'm gonna take the Texans. Okay. Yeah, I think. Uh, I don't know. I just see more potential out of them. I think De- Deshaun Watson is is more of a playmaker than Philip Rivers, and you know, I, I think it's. Uh, yeah, I think Texans. Are they? They're. Where are they play? Who's the home team again? So the Chargers are at home in that high school stadium that they play in. I'll take the Chargers, just just because they'll have home team advantage. But no, oh. here, but here's the thing: even Chargers fans will tell you there's no home field advantage. This stadium is really small. I understand small. that. Yeah. I just like need to really find nice a reason to pick college. them. <laughs> it's a community college stadium. <laughs> and a really nice community college. I'm taking the Chargers, but not by much. You know. 24 27 something like that i think i just think that the teams are pretty evenly matched but uh i'm not sold vegas would agree with you all right so i'm actually going to go ahead with and go with mole here i'm taking the houston texans on the road um i think it's gonna be a very very close game we're talking probably single digits but i do have the uh, houston texans winning and then moving on to the Sunday night football matchup, a marquee matchup with uh, featuring the Cleveland Browns once again in primetime. The 2-0 and LA Rams go to Cleveland, the 1-1 one one Cleveland Browns. Uh, and the line currently is also, uh, oh no, it's not. It's three-point favorites to the Rams. So they're on the road, three points. Oh, yeah, I think, I think the Rams win it. This is actually, I, I'm pretty sure I heard on Sunday night last week that this is the first time Cleveland is hosting a Sunday night football game in 11 years. Wow. Jesus Christ. Um, that, place, that place is going to be a rockin', but I just think the Rams are the better team. Um, I think even, you know, going back to tonight's game, I think the Browns have been struggling. I don't think they put all the pieces together. Um, I think it's going to take a couple more weeks. So I think, I think the Rams are a more well-oiled machine, and I, I think they come away with a win. I I agree with Mole. I think the Rams win, and I don't. I I think it might be closer than people would think, considering everybody hates the Browns because the Browns I, typically brown everything up. 
I think it's going to be more of a rerun of the um, Titans game. And I think the Browns are going to have a lot of people jump off their bandwagon. And they're, they're going to get beat fairly soundly by the Rams. All right. Uh, I think the Rams are going to win this game, no question. But it's not going to be a, a landslide, uh, after, especially after seeing the way Cleveland played. Granted, it was against the Jets tonight. It's the Jets. I, I understand. I understand. But I saw the, the chemistry and how the team worked together. Uh, I, I do like that, but I'm going to take the Rams because I like them a little bit more. Uh, again, another small margin of victory. Uh, Rams win on Sunday night football. Moving on to the Monday night matchup, before I give out any uh, opportunity for people to make picks on this game, I want to give out an open invitation. Uh, we are going to be <clears throat> watching this game as a group uh, in a lobby uh, with a voice chat enabled and everything. We're going to be watching this game together, uh, hopefully get a lot of people there, uh, because it is a one in one Chicago Bears taking on, uh, they are at the 0-2 Washington Redskins. And currently, oh, Christ, uh, Chi- don't get me started. Chicago's favored by four points. Add a zero, and you might be more close. Uh, I'm going to take Washington. Okay, I'm going to take, I'm gonna take Washington. Um, no part. I hate the Bears. That's pretty much it. Okay, I'm going to take Washington to lose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> it is going to be the Redskins, first of all, are bad. Second of all, they're really bad in primetime games. And they crap to bed every time. So I'm going to think, I think the moron clown ass Minuski is going to keep calling his stupid soft zones. Why he wasn't fired today is inexplicable. Jesus um, Christ. <laughs> and they're going to give up about. 24 to 34 points, and they're going to score about 20. Oh, my goodness. You think they'll score 20 points? I think, well, maybe 17 to 14. I don't know, but 14 to 20. So it's going to be bad, and people are going to start calling for Haskins, but it's not Keenum. It's the defense. The strength of this team, people, oh, the, the defense is so good. I said, it sucks. Minuski's calling the plays, and he calls soft zone. Well, that's just preseason. I said, well, what the hell is he doing now? And Josh Norman <laughs> falls down and can't cover and gets beat like the bum he is. And the safeties run around like. Guys, wow. if, if you're hearing any of this and are interested, this is why we need you to come in on Monday night. We're going to be in this court, <laughs> voice chat. You're going to be able to hear live reactions it's from be Chris. MC Seventeen, I can tell you that. <laughs> I, however, will not be there on Monday because I have a job. All good, all good. Um, those of you guys who can make it, please be there. Um, by the way, I'm going to take the Chicago Bears, even though they don't have a quarterback. I got them winning at uh, at Washington. Uh, he'll look like a, he'll he'll do uh, he'll do Lamar to the Dolphins. Sorry, <laughs> defense with the soft <laughs> shit zones. I can't stand soft zones. Bump and run the freaking receivers. Again. Hope- Every other team in the league does it. <laughs> I hope- Why don't you give 10 yard cushion? I really hope to see oh, you guys so. there on Monday night. You don't have to be a member. It's going to be open chat for everybody. Um, Mole, I want to say thank you. Uh, thanks for putting up with the delay and making time out of your schedule for uh, for this podcast. I wish uh, at some point uh, you were you come back maybe you know midway through the season or three quarters of the way season. We- we're done already. Yeah, dude. Oh man. Oh man. Can we can we take five minutes? Can we just can we just talk about Road to the Super Bowl for like five minutes? Okay. So I will say, Road to Double R Road to the Super Bowl is a f- online connected franchise that we've been running in Madden. Uh, essentially, if you're not familiar with what it is, it's like online franchise mode where you play as a particular franchise but we have 32 users and there are 32 nfl Mm -hmm. teams so we have a user controlling every single team now this has been i'm not experienced with running stuff like this and i've firsthand witnessed the growing pains of running such an operation i think we lose and add a new person every single day since we started which is normal which is normal yeah um, and I get excluded. I just want to point that because out because you're on PlayStation. That's your fault. You got the invite. Oh, you got it. Great point. You got an invite to the party. You just decided not to go. All right. 
Okay, That's your you problem. Okay, you sent me to two hundred and fifty dollars for uh, Xbox. <laughs> Why is he gonna pay you to get a better system? Because he wants me to pay his fat ass to stuff his face with sushi. When oh, he here we DC. go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to be a part of that. Um, no, I just, I just real quick, just wanted to say, uh, I, I think, uh, I think it's really cool that you did it. I think. Um, like you said, there's some growing pains, but that comes with every new CFM, especially when it's a community driven CFM where it's like, you know, you post on Twitter, you get people that, you know, are super reactionary at the time and are like, yeah, I can do it. And then two days later, they find out, wait, I'm in school five days a week and my mom's going to ground me. Um, I do want to, I do want to, pro- I'm thinking depending on if you'd be interested in it. Otherwise I can try to see if someone else would be of doing like a little specific podcast for the league. Um, I think it'd be a lot of fun to do it like once every few days. Um, not like every advance, but like maybe every two advances just to kind of keep things fresh, but, uh, it's a lot of fun. I'm glad you did it. Uh, I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm winning my games comfortably. Um, but I'm also, I'm also strictly playing coach suggestions to keep it interesting to be fair. I got you. Yeah, I'm glad I did it. Uh, I knew it was going to be a big undertaking, but I did it anyway. And honestly, I've, I've gotten comments from people like, uh, I think Derek and <clears throat> excuse me from Derek and Purple Swordfish, uh, and and a couple others that said this is the most fun they've had in any Madden that they can remember. Like they it, they've never even gotten into a they've never even thought of playing a thirty two man franchise, but they're enjoying it. And I I'm having a lot of fun with it too. It's super valuable when you can. That's why we needed the commissioner committee and stuff. It's super valuable when you can uh, get a team of people together to kind of help run it. Like if you're doing it by yourself, like it's overwhelming. So, yeah, um, yeah. but it's been, it's been a lot of fun. I think, uh, I think it's something we definitely can keep going until next year in the next release. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm glad you're part of it and uh, you're helping me, uh, moderate and commission the league. So <clears throat> again, I want to say thank you for, for everything, for your, your friendship mainly, you know, we've been friends for quite some time now, so, uh, it's been a oh. pleasure and, uh, thanks again for being on the podcast. Uh, along with the delay hopefully you'll consider coming back uh this is me sarge chris and mole checking on up out of here we will see you guys next time